Hello, and welcome to another episode of Hope Revealed, and we welcome on this episode special guest Mike Weiss. You'll learn some incredible things about online education, building courses, understanding AI, and so much more. Welcome to Hope Revealed. Hey, it's Michael Weiss, the founder of Client Engagement Academy, and I'm excited to be on this podcast, video cast, however you might call it. And one of the things that we're looking to do as an organization is make a global impact. And I know that uh, Matt's all about global impact. And in our case, the global impact is in online education. Online education is, uh, I think, the future of the world. Um, in every continent, it's needed. Uh, some continents, as uh, we were just discussing, it's tough to uh, have happened today, but um, inevitably the entire world will be connected through online education. And what we found is that today, even though it's really crucial and exciting, only 3% of the world's education is digitized. And so we've got basically an entire world worth of education to get digitized, not including all the new stuff. However, the problem is, that as it exists today, the methodologies and mechanisms to train people online are absolutely abysmal. And the averages are only three to 12% completion rates. And so you have the greatest opportunity, I think in the world in the last, since the internet 20 years ago, but you also have an epic fail at the same time. And so what we've done is created a, prof, a platform, the ability to create content courses for thought leaders, methodologies, well, we get 40 to 80% com completion rates and help those thought leaders be much more effective, make a bigger impact in the world, get great results for their customers. And in turn, when you do all that right, uh, your business absolutely explodes. So that's what we're up to. It's, uh, we're in it for the long haul, and it's a very exciting time to, to be involved with online education. Hey folks, this is Matt. Welcome back to another episode of Hope Revealed. I'm pretty excited to have an incredible guy here today. His name is Mike, as you just heard, and he is he's really passionate about online education. And uh, we had had a discussion about that just before we started the podcast today about some things like even over in Africa where folks uh, maybe have the opportunity to have educa education through some old phones. And there's all kinds of ways in technology to reach people. So Mike, thanks for, for being here. Welcome to the show Hope Revealed today. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's great to be on with you again. We had uh, an hour or so call um, a week or so ago, and um, I got a lot of love for you for, for what you're up against, what you're doing, and, um, and how you're trying to make, or not trying, you are making a big impact in the world. So thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks a lot, Mike. I appreciate that so much, too. And you are definitely, I mean, you've got a vision. You know, a lot of people say, well, I want to reach the world, you know, and it's kind of a vague thing, and they not really going to reach the world, but like you literally have an opportunity with what your heart is to literally reach the world. Um, that's a pretty big deal. So how would, uh, how do you make something like that happen, Mike? Woo. It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's through really, uh, you know, um, trial and error. You know, I, um, I was uh, actually writing an, an extensive stories type bio this morning at uh, six o'clock in the morning. And, kind of going through my, my career. It's 31 years. I started in 1987 in the stock market in New York City. And what I realized is that uh, from, as an entrepreneur, which I am, and, and many people out there are, um, most times that new product, new service, new way of doing things comes from um, that person or group of people that are just so perplexed or so frustrated or so angry at the way things are that they actually just can't take it anymore. And they then step into what we all know is not an easy path to start something new to solve a problem that they personally experienced. And so that's at the seed level of um, where we are today because uh, in 2011, I launched a new company with a guy by the name of John Asraf, who maybe some people know he's in the movie The Secret. He was my mentor and business coach for a long time, a company called NeuroGym. And I ran everything digital because I, I was a digital marketing expert. And we did a fantastic job of sales and marketing. We ended up with 7,000 customers in 80 countries in the first 16 months and a few million dollars in sales. And that was like, wow, that's great. However, 
behind the scenes, we had a massive problem. And the fact is that only 12% of the people were finishing. And it was a $700 to $1,000 course. And that didn't sit well with either of us. And not only does it not sit well if you have a heart and you know that people are <laughs> If you to- have a heart. <laughs> that says a lot about the world out there on the internet, yeah. doesn't it? <laughs> you have a heart and you actually yeah. care that people get results. One. Right. But two, from a business standpoint, it's an atrocity. It, it just absolutely destroys your business model because think about it. Every 100 new clients that come in, if 12 get an outcome, you've only earned the right to basically sell them those 12, the next thing or the next thing or the next thing. The 88 others, they paid a lot of money and got nothing. So if you're going to sell them something, you're going to have to bash them and beat them over the head. So there are so many flaws in that model. And that's really what um, stirred the the seed level of where we are today. Now, unfortunately, in 2011, it was the very beginning of online education. Even the online universities were failing. So, you know, we, we did move the needle and doubled the performance, um, but we really were stuck with the limited um, technologies, methodologies, and known ways to engage um, uh, a learners online. So that's sort of the backstory. That sat in there at the seed level for quite some time. I got bought out three or four years later. And then four and a half years ago, uh, my CTO, who also got bought out, built a little piece of software. And he said, take a look. And I really didn't think I was going to be back in the education space. I'm not, I have nothing to do with education per se. I'm not an educator. I didn't go to school as an educator. Um, And quite frankly, I never thought of it as my passion except for the fact that I, uh, I'm a human. And, and from a humanity standpoint, I, it, uh, it's not acceptable that only 12% uh, of the people are getting an outcome. So right, right. That's, where, that's where that stuff got all connected in there. Uh, and then what happened is as I began to look at the space, I realized that my problem was a global phenomenon. And in fact, personal development is at the high range of completion at 12%. Business opportunity Courses are three, Harvard, Yale, MIT, which are the MOOCs. They're at four to six percent. Even a new model like Udemy, not so new anymore, but they got 30 million uh, people and 40,000 instructors, and the best instructors only get eight percent. So I took a step back and I said, wow, this can't be. It's a $250 billion industry going at 17 percent per annum. Only three percent of the world's education is digitized. It's it's where everything's going, yet it's it's an epic fail. And that's where things just all of a sudden came together. And I, I just got inspired to make a huge difference in the world and fix this. Now, so can I pause you for a second there, yeah. Mike? So you said only 3%. What was that statistic? 3% three, of the world? 3 to 12% of people that buy online courses are finishing. Just in general, 3 to 12%. So they buy a product they say, screw it, or this is what I wanted, or some folks say, this is it, and they press in and, and knock it out. But uh, those 3 to 12% make up for what's happening in our world right now pretty much, and the rest of the folks are watching movies, I guess. I don't know what's going on. So, Well, I mean, it's such a deep conversation um, about really what we're talking about, um, and there's just so many levels to it, but let's just – cut to the chase to a conversation that really nobody's having. And that is that um, this is the next uh, revolution slash evolution of humanity that's, that's currently taking place as we exist. So the, this evolution uh, is gonna, it's, it's, it's absolutely gonna force humans to learn new skills, has to, because 20% 20% of the workforce is going to be taken out from machine learning and AI. Right. AI is on, an, uh, this is, I think 2020 is a big year for a boom for things like that to occur, which changes, changes everything. I think everybody's going to have to relearn some things. Some folks that are stuck in their ways. Some folks, I hate to say it like that. Cause I'm, I'm turning in one of those old guys now and say, well, back in my day, <laughs> we didn't have the internet. We didn't have cell phones, which we didn't. And to be able to grasp some of this technology when there's some that are, that are still not willing to go there, obviously, I'd just be real about it. I mean, at the end of the day, 
that that whole group is dying out and there's another group that's that's in place and others that are coming that are going to be completely my children they grew up with nothing but digital around them they don't know anything but the internet anything but social media anything but videos and youtube and things of that nature and it's only going to progress so what you're saying is to be able to buy into something of that nature to build a, a platform like that um it's a legacy thing one because you know you and I are not 25 years old, so you're going to build something right now that will potentially be the next generations of human beings to be able to accept and live into something like, like education, where folks, like you said, some of the top uh, colleges, we just had a, our godson went to school, had a great uh, opportunity through basketball to get a scholarship at a, an expensive college. Um, but, um, a lot of folks can't afford stuff like that. At the end of the day, a lot of folks get those degrees, they come home and they still don't have a job. Um, yeah. but yeah. online education changes everything where, you know, I can know, I can do anything and know anything right here. It doesn't take a college to have it anymore. I just say, Hey, Google, Hey Siri, Hey Alexa. So, you know, is that kind of what you're talking about is moving with AI, moving with all that type of information for people to understand? Well, um, Let's address that in a second, AI and how that comes into education in, in, a, in a few minutes. Because when I brought up AI and the machine learning, um, it's, it's actually, it's, those are the things, that's the risk to society, to traditional jobs that will be taken out. So today, one of the largest um, industries from state to state is, um, has to do with transportation, as trucking, taxis. Uh, all that kind of stuff. I forget the numbers, but I, I listened to the, uh, some guy speak at a, uh, a conference I was at. It was like one of the top 10 geniuses in the world. And basically, I think he basically said if, if all trucking and all those type of things move to, um, you know, the, the self-driving cars, the unemployment goes to 20% just from that. So, but that's how, that's, they're already doing it in cities. It's not like, that's not, like we're going to have a glass of wine and discuss if that's going to happen. The, the, it's a done deal. Um, we just need to get used to it as a society because the factual matter is, is that those cars don't get tired and the vast majority of accidents happen uh, is because of drivers being tired. I didn't even actually know this. It's more dangerous to be tired, very tired in driving than drunk driving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's crazy, right? So it's inevitable. Now, well, what do we do with that population? Forget about the young ones, right? The young ones, well, I have a one and a half year old, he already knows how to work an iPad. And I'm not worried about the teenagers now because they're, they're, it's inevitable that they'll be uh, moving to where the puck's going because it, it's, we're talking about the baby boomers, which is still a large swath of the population in this country that, that need to be addressed. And you're right. My basic rule when we build platforms for companies and thought leaders and we, we consult, design, build, host, manage the platforms, we do the curriculum design, we do it all. But the conversation I have with everybody is that you have to assume that everybody sucks at technology. <laughs> and if you don't come from that perspective, then you're going to have a problem with every platform because that's the reality. Now, I'm a technologist. I know you love technology, but if you take my phone and – you radically change the operating system for a day or two, I'm frustrated. My wife's on an Apple phone, and when I got to do something on her phone, I'm frustrated. And I do this. I, I love this. So imagine all the people out there, as you mentioned, that, that aren't great at technology. And then it gets vastly more complicated because if you think globally, which is what digital education is, think about all the internet connections all the computers from the last decade or two that are still in existence, the operating systems, Macs, IBMs, Unix, you know, iOS, and then think about all the different versions of the browsers and then move not just from desktop to laptop to iPads to the phones. So I'm even amazed that the entire system works at all. <laughs> so what we do is we design the experience we call it the learner pathway in a way that we're, we're constantly working on reducing friction and technology friction is absolutely one of those major factors so that's the example i was using in terms of where we need to be moving 
And then the second part of that conversation is it's not just about more information because more information in itself is useless. So yeah, we do have Google, but the, the only way people learn new skills is by learning and doing, I call it. I, I just call it always learn and do, learn and do, learn and do. And if they're hard skills like Excel or something else, then you learn and you get an Excel and you do it. If you practice, you want to be a writer, you I learn. Need to add, you I need to add one more line to that and throw do down there so it matches up to yeah. what you're saying. Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then if they're soft skills like um, philosophy, religion, parenting, then it's no different because you're learning new frameworks, but you're not going to be a better parent if you read a book and they don't start applying and testing and figuring out what's working, what's not, and you make the mistakes and you get better. So if it's soft skills, which are frameworks, it's still learn and do. And that's where we need to step in as educators into that, that model. And, and when we do that and we help people acquire new skills, then they can move to where the, the puck's going and still make livings, allow the AI and the machine stuff to do what it's going to do because it's going to do what it's going to do anyway and allow us to sort of up level to the things that we're going to do better that the AI and the machine learning could never do. That's a great, I, I, I agree. So, but the one thing I'm concerned and one thing I'm thinking of is, is definitely, you know, the baby boomers, uh, you know, it's still, like you said, there's still a large, large group of that, uh, that whole or culture still there. How do you, how do you communicate to them if, if they're not, we're not hearing you, not listening? I mean, eventually they've got to listen. Eventually they've got to be a part of something. Um, I do believe that baby boomers are a very strong, very powerful part of our world. And they offer a lot of things to our culture that uh, that's missing. I mean, I, I even think about, uh, I forget what the generation is before baby boomers our grandparents or whatnot, but you know, some of the folks that are, that are uh, post world war two, world war two folks uh, that have some incredible information about the lives we've had uh, behind us that built what we have today. There's so many powerful stories that are not being told uh, because they don't know how to tell them. They don't know how to reach people. And the, the kids, the well, kids, the millennials, the different folks that are out there today. They don't know some of those stories they don't understand some of those experiences you know, so how can you, with online education, how can you kind of bring that together so we don't lose that because we're about to, we're about to lose all that stuff and we're moving up to another place. But I think if we move to another place with some of that other stuff, it makes the other stuff that we're going to even better. Yeah. Well, it's interesting um, because I mean, we're all going through what we're going through from a, a family standpoint, but uh, I'm lucky enough to have my, uh, my parents still alive. And they're in great shape, thankfully. Uh, my grandmother is 102, going to be 103. And then I had my other grandparents, except for my grandfather, around for, for many, many of the late years. I, um, I've always been into, like, interviewing and cameras and video, whatever, I, like all the old ones, you know. So I was fortunate enough to create, like, I don't know, I can't remember now because I – this is the point of what I'm sharing is that I created 10 or 12 or 15 questions when my um, grandmother, who's not with us anymore, was alive and recorded it. I know it's on a, it's on a DVD. And I did the same thing with my grandmother now, who's a bit younger. And so to your point, I, I did it because I didn't have kids. I think what they know and their experiences and their stories, they can't just go into the dirt. Right. Um, but what I also found out is I haven't found a great way or any platform that is like, you know, genealogy, but not all out of the shit, sorry, but just like a story board where right, right. if you had 20 or 50, 100 people in your family, like everyone can load up um, what you're talking about, which is the lessons the history, the experiences, because there is no replacement for that. How, when this generation of uh, concentra concentration camp survivors is no longer with us, which uh, th there's very few with us, um, and there's been, um, Steven Spielberg was involved with a, a movement, actually, thankfully, um, 
to go and record a lot of them. This was after Schindler's um, List, maybe? No, no, he, he recorded um, interviews of the survivors. That's awesome. He's doing it for over a decade because he, re because he realized that when that generation is gone, who can actually share personal experience about the, that type of hatred for no reason? Right. But that needs to carry forward with us because it's, it's, it's a risk for humanity in some way, shape, or form. So you, I agree with you. I haven't found um, a platform or a way to do it, um, but it's, it's an interesting point. Yeah, it's pretty necessary, which, you know, is it, at the end of the day, you know, you're really doing something that's very powerful for focusing on online education. And there's a lot of incredible people out there that have great passions. They have some, some great knowledge. They just don't know how to put all that kind of stuff together necessarily, um, you know, to make a nice shiny little package and your PDFs that go along with video number one and module number five has this and that. And, uh, and you've able to do that through what you're, do you're doing now. You're able to take somebody, bring them in. If they need all the works, you can, you can help them to become that type of person and or somebody that comes in with all the stuff and says, I got everything we need. Let's just rock, rock and roll, do this thing. But you can actually take somebody who, um, from what, what I've talked with you before, I believe, you can actually take somebody who has the information, the knowledge and experience and help them to create their own courses and to be able to live into that type of thing and start doing those, that type of work with this platform, right? That's what you're saying you do, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we do the, um, the done for you. So we'll uh, work with thought leaders or companies and we'll look at uh, their IP. Um, and then we, we have a curriculum design department with a woman with a PhD and two with masters that written hundreds of college credit courses. And we've melded traditional curriculum design with what we know works from a data standpoint and engagement and outcome on online ed. And within 30 days, we can actually take someone through the start to finish and then spit back to them exactly what they need to record. They record, they give it back to us, and then we assemble everything, the videos, the transcripts, the, uh, the audio, the quizzes for every lesson, the final exam, all the email copy that goes along with it, along with the digital badge and the diploma. So we've been service-based since our launch a little more than four years ago. And uh, about six months ago, I uh, made a decision that we, we, uh, we, we have to, we have to get better and be able to provide the systems and the process that we're using in a way that's more attainable to more people, right? Our solutions are um, not very expensive, but they're not inexpensive either. And so we're in the process of uh, digitizing uh, our, a lot of our systems and processes so that we can actually provide some free workbooks and, and things like that, which we, we, we have now in the curriculum design side, particularly, uh, come up with two great um, uh, PDFs that are like worksheets with directions that people can go through and, and, and utilize um, independently of what we do to sort of, you know, set them up to the framework to begin what you just suggested, which that, was that coursework. Um, and then we're... That would be well, for someone that maybe can't afford to do the whole the DFY program with you. Uh, but yes. they really have something there so they can go get some of this material and kind of get started with their thing and, and it's kind of get the ball rolling on, on their own. That's what you're saying? Yeah, absolutely. And, and unfortunately, the problem is that the, the vast majority of everyone teaching online education is teaching it absolutely wrong. You know, people are saying, oh, you can do a live event and record it and sell it as a course. That, that's the farthest thing from a course. And, and in fact, if you measure teaching content during a live event, most times it's less than 20% of the total time. So then you're gonna go dump a day or two's worth of video on someone and say, that's a course, it's not a course. It's a recording of a live event, it's great for a bonus. You wanna charge someone $5,000 for a recording of a live event? Perfect, don't call it a course because you're not gonna create an outcome and you're just gonna rip people off I, I totally agree. Totally agree. Yeah. So not like one. that. That doesn't happen out there, but come on. No, nobody does yeah. that. <laughs> that's one terrible strategy. The other is, you know, the people teaching, um, you know, create a course on a fly. So it's a low risk way to see if you have a viable business, but it, that's, it might be good for you, right? Because you're not making the investment and in actually creating an outline, the structural design of a course, the lesson plans, the syllabi, the quizzes in the final ahead of time. So it's good for you. But it's an absolute disaster for the learner because then you're going to get 50 or 100 people or 1,000 people 
And every month, you're just up there. You know, this is module one. You're recording what you're teaching people live. And once again, it's structurally, it's never going to be at the level that it should be because you didn't want to risk making an investment. People taught you that get the clients first and then worry about just delivering something. And it's uh, subpar at best. You know, so, you're hitting the hot button there, buddy, because <laughs> Lord knows I've heard, I've heard that many times from a lot of different people. And it is definitely a mindset that many, um, many organizations, I'll just say, that are teaching people um, to do. I can understand people that provide value, that have some good content, and you want to record it and do an evergreen thing. Uh, for those that don't know evergreen, evergreen is when you record something you, and it's available for playback anytime you want it. Um, so when they do an evergreen webinar or cl clinic workshop, whatever, I can understand there's some value there, but what you're saying makes a whole lot of sense that, um, it shouldn't be so that we just kind of wing it and say, this is something that we spent a bunch of time and effort in to make sure that you learn how to do this. Uh, cause you don't, you're, you're winging it. Well, so is the person who's listening. <laughs> they kind of have to wing it right along with you. Absolutely. And here, and here's where. Like if, when I explain this formula, once again, the, there's people out there that just want to sell shit and they don't care and whatever. That, that Nothing I'm talking about is for them. Um, but there's people that actually that care that they have specialized knowledge and they want to make an impact. You know, it took me um, three years to come up with the tagline for our company because every time I come up with something and, you know, I have, um, I'm in a few very expensive masterminds. I'm with people that are super smart and taglines and elevator pitches and this and that. I just purpose and vision and mission and nothing stuck. And finally, I, uh, I, it, something came up and our tagline is we produce better lives. And we do that by empowering people to create online courses that make an impact. Now, make an impact means that the learner has a new skill, process, or way of being that produces a better life for them. There isn't any online course in any subject where someone can argue with me that the objective is not to help them acquire a new skill or framework or way of being. So when we are great salespeople online, and that's what I, that, I was the funnel guy before there was funnels, um, and I mentioned you know, our success in selling, what you have to realize is that when people are at that point of sale, you've done your webinar, you've done your whatever it is, they're actually ready to push the button to buy. They're not buying more information. They, a few things have to happen. One, they have to trust you. They have to believe that you have a method or system that can help them, and they have to believe that they can do it. If you don't have any of those three, you're not going to get a sale. But if you have those three, what they're really buying at that point is they're buying the transformation. They're buying what you're, you're telling them. How they're to buying what you're better. selling. Yeah, it's not, it's not about the course anymore. Yeah, you're, you're saying do this, you're going to feel better. Do this, you'll be, you'll be um, a better leader, a better salesperson, a better public speaker. You'll be better accountant. You'll be uh, more spiritually connected and have purpose and meaning in life. You'll be able to build a home. You'll be able to flip a home. It doesn't matter. They're buying the transformation. So the mere fact that then you would disrespect them and create something on the fly that doesn't live into that promise, well, once again, this is not, I'm not blaming anyone. I'm not judging anyone. I'm just saying that no one even knows this, what I'm sharing, until that you're on this now. And what I say, Matt, when I get on the phone with people, is like your life was great until you just heard this because now the, shift, the responsibility shifts 100% to you. <laughs> Everything I'm changes. My job, right? Yeah. Now, if you're an educator listening to us and you hear all this, then you have a choice, right? But the choice is yours now. Prior to that, you didn't even know any of this stuff was all wanked out. So, um, so here you go, folks. We just ruined your life today. <laughs> <laughs> It's time to make some changes. And uh, yeah, this, I really feel like 2020 has been a big deal for a lot of people. And there's been a lot of talk about 2020, a lot of energy about this year. And I feel like it's a great opportunity for folks to really engage with some things they haven't engaged with before. I do also believe that folks are open to doing that. Um, but some of the times they just don't know 
what that that is. They don't know where to go, how to do that kind of stuff. And we had had a discussion about uh, about Hope Revealed before the show started, and and you shared with me a couple of things. But as we're talking, I'm thinking just what you're talking about is actually it's actually a hope being revealed right now. I think that what you're saying with the type of business you're trying to accomplish, and obviously you have a business that's for profit, and you're hiring folks that are that are working for you to do stuff to get an outcome for people so that they enjoy it and buy more stuff. So, I mean, okay, there's that part there. Duh. Everybody has a business because you're going to have to make money. But at the same time, you're providing something that is going to bring an outcome into the world. I think that, uh, you know, at this point you're working with, uh, with great thinkers and, and uh, creative people that are providing products and, and information to folks that, that can help change their lives and change the world. Um, but I think you're thinking from what I understand, you're thinking in a bigger picture than that. We have an opportunity to uh, to create an educational platform uh, and a system of reaching people uh, that may not necessarily be there right now. So in my mind, I'm thinking, well, we've got systems. We've got YouTube. You know, you said you to me. We've got stuff like that out there right now. There's several things like that. We've got Teachable, uh, Thinkific, different platforms where people can do uh, educational things and membership sites and whatnot. So what what's the difference? Where do we go from from there? I mean, we're at Right, we're at Thinkific, we're at Teachable, we're at this, all this stuff with your platform. Where, where, where do we go from there? Yeah, well, let's just basically dissect what you just said. So uh, there's a lot of stuff available, but the fact is, is 3 to 12% completion rates. So there's absolutely something that has to change. And so the easiest place and the most impactful place for people to make a change is in their course design. Because no, no one knows how to do that. Like I didn't go to school for that. That what I've learned in the last two and a half years from my curriculum design department is a schooling of what it actually means to understand scientifically how the brain works and how to actually give that information in a way that cognitively people can ex- internalize it and then learn and do. So that's why we're making the big move to really put our systems and processes and develop courses for the masses globally to take that will focus on the curriculum design. So regardless of the platform you're on, all the ones you mentioned are fine. You have the ability to do this work yourself and radically upgrade uh, your your course and your curriculum. So that's one big jump. The second part of it is, and I always recommend Lean Startup, and that's how I started this company. And the SaaSes that you mentioned are all perfect for Lean Startup. But... The way I describe, because people always ask me the difference of what's your the difference between what your platform does and those platforms, and the way I describe how that works is if we look and back out and think about, okay, um, let's look at websites. Perfect example, right? So if you want to build a website in 15 minutes, you can just sign up for Wix. They've done an extraordinary job of making it super simple. But what we have is a very tight container of what you can and can't do. Push some buttons and you've got a great site. Right. But if you want more than what that site, that, that thing is capable of, you end up at the end of that container and there's nothing you can do. You can't break into Wix and build new functionalities that you need. <laughs> no. But then you would get out of Wix and you would go to GoDaddy's Builder. GoDaddy's Builder is better. It's more complex and it has more functionality. But once again, when you ran into the edges, you'd be stuck. So then you might go to Moodle which or one of the other builders that's better, bigger. And then at ultimately one third of the world ends up in WordPress. But at the end of the day, if you, WordPress is a, a gigantic container. You can get into the database. They have, it's open source. So there's a lot more things you can do. But at the end of the day, it still has its restraints from what is the ultimate of building everything from scratch in HTML. That ladder exists in the online education platforms. And so that's why I say lean startup is fine. The SaaS is a fine. And that's probably where most people should start. But the reality is that those SaaSs are all very simplistic containers. And the real uh, process of moving from 3 to 12% to 40 to 80%, which is what we get, involves so many different methodologies and strategies and tactics, point scoring and leaderboards and digital badges and built-in accountability and, and all the stuff that, that we do, that you need more flexibility. Our, we have a WordPress-based site with the ultimate ability to customize that learner pathway for each customer we work with and each course. And that's 
So that I just want to frame that out. And like I said, for lean startup, you keep your expenses down and then you test, is this a viable uh, opportunity? The jump that you make is that once you know you figured out the ability to acquire a customer, you figure out the ability, oh, I can get five customers a month or 10 customers a month or 50 customers a month. And maybe I, my course is $500. So once you figure that out, then the investment into the superior platform that's going to produce outrageous results, that makes sense. That's how any business works. You say, okay, it's going to cost me 20 grand, but I know in three or four months with the run rate that I have, because I've taken lean startup, that will pay for itself. Then I have a lifelong investment that's going to pay me forever. Now, where it gets extraordinarily exciting is when you start to look at the math of the actual business in itself. And this is another thing that no one really gets into, but this is really, we, we help build back ends for companies. The entire back end, which covers regular courses and membership sites and multi layers and then more sophisticated courses and certifications and trainer trainers and coaching programs, the entire back end. So we're, we're really expert at understanding business, online business. And so when we look at that model of, oh, I have one course and I get three to 12 percent, we use the example 12 percent, 1,200 people now are energized to buy your next product. That's 12 out of 100. 88 didn't get an outcome and they're not going to. And what's happened in the last half a decade is that it just keeps getting more and more expensive to acquire your first customer. It used to be very cheap on Facebook. And before that, it was very cheap to advertise and do SEO and Google and all that stuff. So the cost acquisition is going up. If your entire business is dependent on one sale, your first sale, you've got a business model that you, you're going to be like a, the dodo bird and be extinct. It, 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 it has to happen. As it is now, it can cost three or four, $500 to acquire a customer. So where does this get exciting? Is that once you do the lean startup, get a great course, do it, prove that you can get five or 10 or 50 or 100 clients a month, then you make the investment and then you can use all the tools to go from 10 or 12 or 15% completion to 50 to 80% completion. And so out of those 100, now 50 people are energized and they go on to buy the second course, the third course, the fourth course. It, it's a wonderful effect. It compounds. You're in the accumulation of clients because you're doing what you said you're going to do and help them producing outcomes. And then all those second, third, fourth, 10th product purchases are like 90% profit margin, 95% mm. profit margin. So this is something that, is uh, it's the business side of the online course world. I, I, I've, I've been motivated over the last week or two to actually create a course on this, the business of online uh, education. And this is something that we did, like Digital Marketer. Many people might know Digital Marketer. If you don't, you should look them up. You should actually opt in to um, the, one of their eBooks. They're, they're, they're incredible. It's Ryan and, and Richard Lindner and Ryan Dice. Um, I consulted, co-designed, built, hosted, and launched their certification program. And we went from one to 10. And the vast majority of people went on to buy everything they had because they got outcomes along the way. And it's the difference between struggling and potentially being out of business mm -hmm. or making the smart logical steps to build a business that can thrive because the world needs you. You've got specialized knowledge. You've been, say, a machine operator or a manager in a plant for 20 years. You figured out the way to motivate people, inspire people, how to stop mistakes, reporting systems. There's a market for that. Right. There's a market for everything. If you've got specialized knowledge and experience, then there's an opportunity for you to share that with others that need it. So, Mike, I know you work with, with John, and John is really big into, uh, into the brain and uh, neurology. I think neurology, neuro something, neurology. I'm not that smart. But, uh, Neuros yeah, the neuroscience of the brain. There you go. So he's, uh, I, I took a course with him and watched his program, and, 
and saw what he's able to do by breaking down some of the ways that our brain works, the way we think, the way things uh, are processed. And you're actually taking some of those, well, I mean, you are taking those thought processes and, and molding them into what you have here. So somebody that comes in to do a course like this, are they going to be able to, um, to understand the methodology so that they can actually be someone who continues to do this themselves? So you do a DFY for somebody, you just do a DFY and give it to them. That's great. But, um, you know, what happens for the next one? Are they learning what that means and comprehending that themselves as a, a client of yours so they can continue on and grow themselves as they teach others? Great question. So our done for you solution, we consult, design, build, host, and then we, it's mandatory that we manage the experience in the platform with you. So we're getting into long-term engagements with our customers because we're ever evolving. The second half of this year, this is where we're going to tie in the AI, which I mentioned way earlier that we were talking about AI about something else. Now let's bring it full spectrum. And there's so much to talk about. I mean, this is like a day's worth of everything. But like digital badges, we haven't even approached. And that'll, that'll have to be a different conversation. That's what Mozilla, who created Firefox, created. It's the game changer and the leveler for uh, online education. Yeah, but, even oh, Facebook is using badges now. So, Yeah, but those are LeBron badges. Those are badges <laughs> of images that aren't as effective as this whole next wave that's taking place right now. But going back to AI, in the second half of this year, we will be using AI to create, which is the next entire level of education. And that is uh, instant, dynamic, on-demand learning. So what that looks like is, um, let's take an example. Um, I don't know, you want to become an expert in Facebook advertising. So normally we would say, okay, to the specialist, Let's get the course A to Z. It's, say, um, 12, 20 modules. And it's linear. It stacks. It's learn and do. Look, all the stuff that we talk about. Point scoring, leaderboards, digital beds, built-in accountability. We pick them up. You can level on coaching on that if you want on top of that. One to many exercises, processes, and systems, and checklists, and everything. So that's great. We do, we do that better than most. However, how do we know what the real needs are of the thousand customers we got over the last quarter we're just assuming that every single person that enters is starting from the same starting point is starting with the same knowledge the reality is is we have global buyers and it's in, in completely across the board now we're adjusting today for learning styles some people are auditory some people are visual some people right. like to read so we, we adjust for that today. But there's an entire another uh, process that through AI we're going to get to, and that is initially we are going to actually create these uh, onboarding um, surveys, which will then categorize their skill sets in five core categories. Pre-qualification, -pre basically. Yeah, and based on that score, the AI will then take not 20 lessons that we built, but we'll build 40 that will also be categorized in these five categories. And so for that first person coming in, that's the weakest in category five, strongest in one, and then blah, when they push the submit button instantly, their course will be developed for them. Out of the 40, they'll get the 20 in the order that's going to produce the best result for them based on where they are today. So that 40 to would be, if I'm the guy, if I'm the course creator, I've created 40 modules prior and I've already recorded the content and I've recorded the videos and everything's there. And, and then the AI says, okay, take module seven and three and four and six and put them all together for this person. Automatically 24, seven, 365 for thousands and thousands of people per minute. If it's not, if that's what it is. It doesn't matter automatically. That's crazy. So it's on demand, it's dynamic learning and it, it's guaranteed to produce a better results because we're matching their need to what we have available to get them over the chasm of learn and do to create the outcome. No, that's fantastic. I, I've been through so many courses like you, and there's a lot of times I'll go through some courses that are really great stuff, but I, uh, I personally start skipping and choosing myself. I like, man, I don't need this part. I don't need that part. Oh, I need this one. And at the same time, what that's doing is robbing me of my time 
to have to go through all the stuff to find out that I needed module 17 instead of one through 12 and, you know, all these other types of things. So not only will it uh, save uh, somebody time when they come to something like that, it'll give you what you need right away instead of trying to wonder what you need to get out of this program, right? Totally. That's pretty amazing. So, so as, a, as the content creator, you're offering somebody the transformation uh, that they've come for and it's it's pretty solidly guaranteed if you're going to be willing to apply it and do obviously but it's pretty pretty solidly guaranteed that if you come to this program you're going to get what you asked for yeah and the reality is if you're like most human beings and you're going to start and stop stuff our system we're on top of you <clears throat> so it, it's a <clears throat> it's a fact we start and stop diets we start and stop gym we start and stop courses so you just, what, what are we gonna we know that that's human nature. What do we do about that? So we have an entire process and system to take care of that. So it's not like, you know, I'd like to say like the field of dreams you've built, it will, it will produce a result. There's a lot of other <laughs> things that go into it because we're dealing with human nature. So, so you're probably gonna have to have some kind of little bot that comes out and says, uh, hello, Matt, this is, uh, this is the bot man. And I'm telling you, stop doing that right now. Get back to the lesson. What are you doing? <laughs> Yeah, got some accountability well, you know, somewhere. Yeah, I mean, right now we have uh, built-in accountability by email, uh, recorded voicemail, and or text, um, and we can't add in, um, you know, messenger bots. Although uh, I think Facebook's is kind of uh, rethinking the open bot attacking of bot messenger world which I think got a little out of hand. It's that's way Facebook out of hand right now. I, I don't even bother listening to them anymore. I'm like, just shut up. Yeah, stop. Yeah. <laughs> that's how Facebook does it. They open it up and make it wildly uh, useful and people get embedded and indoctrinated into it. And then they close it down. And now I think like for 24 hours, you can bot someone. And then if you want to reach people, you got to pay. <laughs> so, <laughs> <clears throat> but, but there's going to be, there, I mean, that's why I'm saying that <clears throat> where we are today is where the internet was 20 years ago. It's just, it's so much fun and it's, um, it's gonna be ever growing. Like today, the internet is ever growing. 20 years ago, when they said Amazon was gonna you know, reach $100 million of sales online, people, like I, I was in the financial business and people were like, that's never gonna happen. You know, today everyone's like, oh, there can't be any more online sales, but we're, like, we're still only at 20, 20 to 25% of total sales done through the internet and um, why is it winning because it's it's a new world and it's a new way of being and they're they're partially responsible for creating it but also they're serving into how people want to want to engage and be interacted yeah. so we when we are at a scale of one to ten with physical education like it's outright broken so everything that's exists is zero below zero and even the stuff that we're doing, which is, uh, you know, four, six, a thousand times better than what's actually happening today, we're still at one. So that gives you the idea of where everything is going. We're at one, which is 1,000 times better than everything else. But we're still... <laughs> if I do say so myself. <laughs> but it's true. You've invested in stuff that people aren't doing. Yeah, yeah the other well, platforms, I mean, they're just, they're storage, they're storage spaces, really what it comes down to with the... Uh, couple nice marketing things. I, I don't mean to put everybody down me, but a lot of places that's, I mean, YouTube's just storage space and marketing, you know, and some yeah. of the other places are doing some of the same. Some other people out there have platforms that they care about education. They try to teach. They got some great modules, um, but you're, you've taken it to a whole different realm with what you're trying to accomplish right now, especially to try to tailor something specifically to somebody's brain, the way they're able to, the way they're able to learn, you know, is amazing. So, uh, well, We've talked a lot about that stuff today. So before we give everybody some, their heads start to explode, because there's so many other things we could talk about, um, we might do another show on that down the road. There's a lot of things that I think would be fun to talk about. But um, how, how could folks get a hold of, of you, your organization? What's the name of it again? The website? I mean, all that kind of stuff, Mike. Yeah, so we're, uh, my name is Mike Weiss. Um, I need to do a much better job of being out there because there happen to be a lot of Mike Weisses. But the client... Engagement Academy. Client Engagement Academy is the name of our company. <clears throat> um, and you go to our site. The place that you can, right on the, above the fold, there's an opportunity to opt in for one of our uh, ebooks. That's a great uh, ebook. But the other thing <clears throat> I would do is go to our blog. 
Um, it's on the menu in the top. So go to Client Engagement Academy. Just look in the menu. Go to the blog. Subscribe. Um, we're putting out between two to four uh, blog articles a month, 1,000 plus words that aren't machine-made blogs of just spinning uh, keywords. Copy and paste, yeah. That are, that are actually <clears throat> a lot of what we're talking about today. Um, we, you know, the blog articles cover more in-depth concepts. So it, it's great. They're free. Um, and then we have a lot of other free trainings as well. Uh, every Wednesday, uh, I'm doing a Weiss's Wednesday where it's uh, 48 minutes on a, a topic about online education or marketing. Um, so th that's available as well. So we're in the, um, we're in the re-education of the world space. So we're now really trying to put out a lot of free information so people can get value. That's fantastic. Well, Mike, thanks so much for being here today on Hope Revealed. I think that we have revealed hope in quite a different way. I think that we're looking at, uh, at the hope of what can be what is and what can be. And uh, you even brought up the fact that even though you've got some great stuff going on with your business, and you've invested a lot of time, money, and effort, that um, even though that it's still that great, you're still right at the, at the edge of beginning something that could be, uh, could be huge for generations to come. So um, it's a great way to look at it, great way to think about it. Uh, it's a lot more than just saying, uh, hey, Google, I got to be careful because the last time I said that, uh, she heard me over there, Miss Siri, and she turned on while we were talking. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you, there's, said it, there, you said it, mine turned on too. <laughs> it's hilarious. It's hilarious. But there's so much more to, to life than that. And uh, at the end of the day, we are human beings. We have our own brains, and our processors are, are way, way, way bigger than anything this could hold right now. Oh, look, she turned back on again. Sorry. <laughs> Must have, I must have offended her. So, uh, but we have a great opportunity to continue to build what's up here uh, because we don't have that going on. We don't really have anything. And uh, that's a great way to, uh, to build what's coming for the future. What's here, like it's here and here, right? It's, it's that's right. It's the 18 inches of, of, of power right here and information, knowledge, wisdom, everything's right there. Yeah, no doubt. Well, Mike, thanks so much for being here today with us on Hope Revealed. And uh, we'll have, again, all your information will be here on the podcast for folks, and uh, they'll be able to get, get in contact with you. And, and uh, uh, it's fantastic what you've been able to do. And I can't wait to share some of your stories. We've got some other stuff we've got to talk about with folks. They have no idea what some of the things you're going to be able to talk to them about that you had that's happened in your life from uh, some pretty horrible moments you experienced uh, and some pretty powerful moments at the same time. But um, we'll go that to another time on Hope Revealed. So thanks again for being here, Mike, today. Thank you. Thanks to everyone that's out there listening. And um, make an outcome, bigger impact. And then when you do that right, make some more money. Oh, that's good. That's good. So there you go, folks. That's your Hope Revealed. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Hope Revealed. We'll join you another Tuesday. Follow along on our YouTube channel and follow along, of course, and subscribe at our podcast sites like Podbean, iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and so many more. We'll see you the next time for another Hope Revealed.